cylinders in the field, you'll typically see either a 4x8 cylinder or a 6x12 cylinder. The primary differences between the two is the type of rod you use. With 4x8, you'll use a 3 8 inch rod. With a 6x12, you'll use a 5 8 inch rod. You want your rod to be at least 4 inches longer than the depth of, the, of your mold, but no longer than 24 inches. With the 4x8, you're going to fill it in two equal lifts. With the 6x12, you'll fill it in three equal lifts. You're going to rod it 25 times, circular motion, around the outside, work your way in. You want to fully penetrate that lift without, fully, without forcibly striking the bottom of the mold. After you've rotted that lip, we'll strike the mold 10 to 15 times with a mallet. Strike the mold. 10 to 15 times with a mallet. With the 6x12, it's going to be done in the same procedure, just with three equal lifts, rotting 25 times, striking with a mallet 10 to 15 times. You'll hear that you're not supposed to strike these molds with the mallet, but according to the ASTM, you can use the mallet on these molds as long as they're not susceptible to damage when struck with the mallet. Typically you'll find that the old aluminum beam molds and cardboard molds are the ones that they're referencing there because those can be deformed when struck with the mallet. Now if the consistency of the concrete allows, you can use your striker bar or your rotting bar strike off the surface of the mold. If the concrete such that it's a little bit hard to strike it off with a rod, then you can use a handheld trowel or a float to strike off the surface of the concrete. Make sure you clean off your mold. If for any reason in transportation to the initial curing spot, the mold become roughed up on the surface, you'll want to refinish your mold, cover your mold so that you don't get any evaporation, you want to ensure that you've got your markings on your mold for identification, and begin initial cure.